Jamie, you are done. Hi, Suzanne. Um, thanks so much for joining. You'll be speaking with Dean and Jonathan. You have eight minutes. I'll be recording on my end as a backup, uh, but just please keep an eye on the chat function. I'll give you a two minute warning when you have two minutes left. Sounds good. Thanks so much. How you guys doing? Hey, good. how are you? All right. I've talked to Dean a few times now. Nice to meet you, Jonathan. You too. Um, this uh, first question, Dean, uh, this seems like a more serious show than your other series that you've done. Um, was this a conscious decision or was it just in the script or was it because you were working with Jonathan? Or? Well, you know, I think the thing is that it, it, the life and death stakes of this are so immediate from the get go. It, 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 it can't be quite as light as uh, uh, the other shows I do. But, you know, uh, uh, Jonathan and I have worked together again, and we both have this kind of optimistic view of the human spirit. And uh, I know that dark and edgy is, is, is kind of the, uh, the trend today, but uh, uh, you know, we really wanted to, to buck that trend and have a show that's really a little bit more uplifting, a little bit more about the triumph of the human spirit. And I, I think you, you'll feel that as, as you watch more and more of the episodes. But yeah, the, uh, the intensity of this pressure cooker that these people are in uh, uh, dictates a, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, a more serious tone than some of my other work. Right, and uh, I don't know if you guys can answer this or not, but can you tell me whether the show will take place entirely in space? Uh, well, let's put it this way, the first season will. Okay, interesting. All right. Uh, now, I noticed that the actors in the show, they look like regular people. Uh, I mean, some of them are beautiful in real life more than, the, you know, but in the show, you make them look like real people. And I didn't recognize a lot of the actors, so they're not like big, well-known people. Was that a conscious decision to make them look like more like ordinary, everyday people? Yeah, I, I think that, that you know, the, the, the thing that separates this show from, from other space shows is that all the people who are meant to lead this mission, all the all the leaders, all the the the, the people in charge, they all die in the opening scene. Right. And so you know, this is really about the common person having to become extraordinary in a very short amount of time in real life and death situations. And so we wanted a, a diverse cast from a variety of different countries who feel like your friends. You know, what what if you and your neighbors suddenly had to run everything? And if you screwed up, everybody dies. You know, so it. it uh, uh, I think that's what kind of separates this show from different shows that have been in space. Um, it made it fun casting it. And, uh, but sometimes, you know, the actors would show up and they would be like, oh my God, way too gorgeous. All right, uh, uh, what are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, the actress who plays a uh, cat is uh, way prettier. Uh, in other roles I've seen her than in here. She's pretty, but not like drop dead gorgeous pretty, yeah. Um, so, um, how did you uh, come up with the idea for the show? Um, it, it was actually a, a, a conversation I was having with a, a man named Michael Wright, who used to run TNT when I did Leverage and the Librarians, mm -hmm. and now I think he, he, he's running uh, MGM Plus. Um, and we were just having conversations about shows we wanted to see. And he said, you know, I'd really, I really miss the diverse characters in a contained environment traveling through space. Because, you know, we used to do, we don't do that kind of show that often anymore. And when we do, it's not really about the people. And, and it just got my mind spinning. And I started thinking about it. Well, if I had my opportunity to tell that show, what would, what would be the show I'd want to make? And so I wrote this pilot. I showed it to Jonathan. I said, is this any good? And he goes, it could, it could be. And he gave me some notes and I made it better. And, and we sold it. And uh, uh, we've just been having the best time ever making it. And uh, for both of you, I assume you watched science fiction shows growing up. So what would you say were your influences uh, on, about this show? Well, I grew up in the day when the original Star Trek was running five days a week, sure. at, you know, on 15 channels all the time. It's like, so I, I really grew up watching that when I was a little kid and loved it and uh, could probably recite every episode for you. And then the next generation uh, kept me going in that world. and. That's, I think, what launched me down the sci-fi path. And of course, you know, Star Wars came out and uh, all, all the great movies, Alien, and I, I sucked it all up. And I used to read a lot of science fiction as a kid. In fact, I hated reading as a kid, and that was the only thing I would read was yeah. science fiction and fantasy. So, What about you, Dean? 
Well, when I was a little boy, my mother was an actress. Right. And she did a guest star on the original Star Trek on the Wolf in the Fold episode. Oh, cool. And, and she came home with one of the stuntmen's uh, 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 phasers. It was all beat up and stuff. And she gave it to me. And that was literally what started my addiction. <laughs> and as Jonathan said, shortly thereafter, uh, Star Wars came out and Close Encounters and Aliens and the work of all these brilliant people uh, uh, just made me fall in love with the, the genre. And I thought, this is what I want to spend my life doing. Oh, that's great. Uh, I described this show to some friends of mine who are science fiction fans. Uh, in the 70s, I used to belong to a science fiction club at San Diego State. Uh, and um, we are, we're all still online friends even though the club is long gone. And I posted about the show to tell them about it. And they, one of them said it sounded a little bit like Land of the Lost. I don't know if you remember that show. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so just wanted to put that out there. Um, <laughs> I'm telling all my friends to watch it. So um, thank you. Yeah, you've both done a lot of TV shows. Uh, was there anything about doing this particular show that surprised you? Surprised us? Hmm. while you were doing it I mean I'm, I'm always surprised and this is true of every show I've ever done though I'm always surprised by what the actors do with what what I've written and that always um, you know that always you know I'll, I'll write it one way I'll hear it one way in my head and then the actors will do their interpretation of it and it's so completely different than what I imagined but so much better you know and so I'll I'll that'll always get me when that happens Dean? I, I would say the exact same thing. It's, it's, it's sometimes an actor will look at another character and there'll be something in the eye and I'll immediately get on the phone with Jonathan. I go, did you see that? And he'll go, yeah. I go, well, what do you think that was? He goes, I've already written a whole backstory to explain that look. I was like, great, what is it? <laughs> you know, uh, we, I mean, when we started, we had a whole plan of what to do with the whole season. But I will say that that plan got flexible based yeah. on these wonderful surprises we would see on set where we get inspired and say, oh, well, we were gonna go here, but maybe we just go slightly to the left because there's something really interesting going on between these people. That's and, I, and I think a lot of that actually had to do with the actors being in Serbia. You know, they were away from their friends, they were away from their families, they really only had each other, like the characters on the show. And I think that this off-camera life fed onto the on-camera life. And that just made this thing get more and more interesting each week. Great, well, I yeah, think I know the that every, I know that every, like that. Sorry. Yeah. I know that every weekend the the actors used to go to the park and do a read through of the next script and have conversations. But what do you think this means? What do you think that means? And and so I think that informed a lot of what we would see on screen later. Cool. Yeah, there's so many mysteries and things. Yeah. What happens next? I really enjoyed the four episodes. I look forward to the rest. And while I have you here, not thank you not only for this show, but thank you for um, Stargate the movie and the TV show very much. Big fan. Thank you. <laughs> Terrific. Nice to talk to you. See you later, guys. Thanks so much, Suzanne. Thank you.